we have three readings presented to us by the Holy Mother Church. We shall be reflecting on the Gospel of today, taken from the Gospel of John chapter 1, from verse 29 to 34. John is not among the Synoptic Gospels. The Synoptic Gospels are the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. These are called Synoptic Gospels because they are similar. The theme of our reflection this evening and this month is the identity of Jesus. There are about nine or ten biblical titles used for Jesus in the Gospel of John alone. These titles speak a lot of volumes about the identity of Jesus and what he should do for us. We shall be reflecting only on two of the ten titles given to Jesus. Number one is Jesus as the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God that addresses our problem of sin. Number two is the bread of life that addresses our problem of hunger. John chapter 6 from verse 51 to 68. So we are reflecting on Jesus as the Lamb of God, and also as the bread of life. Jesus is the Lamb of God that addresses our problems of sin. He takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1, from verse 29 to 34. You need to believe this in order to conquer sin and become a saint. At Mass, we celebrate two things. We celebrate the liturgy of the Word and the liturgy of the Holy Eucharist. We are still celebrating the liturgy of the Word. Liturgy of the Word is concluded with the prayer of the faithful. Then the presentation of gifts is the beginning of the liturgy of the Holy Eucharist. So before the reception of Holy Communion, after Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, the priest raises the sacred species, that is the Santissimo, and says, this is the Lamb of God. This is he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who come to the suffer of the Lamb. It's not an ordinary prayer. It's a great prayer. But what was in John's mind when he introduced Jesus to his disciples as the Lamb of God? There are some pictures which may well contribute something to it. In the first place, John was thinking about Passover Lamb. The story and event of Passover was that it was the blood of the slain lamb which protected the lives of the Israelites on the night they left Egypt. Exodus chapter 12 from verse 11 to 13. On the night when the angel of death walked abroad and slew the firstborn of the Egyptians, the Israelites met their doorposts with the blood of the slain lamb. And when the angel saw the blood, he passed over. The blood of the Lamb delivered them from this divine destruction. The blood of the Passover Lamb that delivered the people of the Israelites on this great night is a pointer to the real Lamb in the person of Jesus who will shed his blood on the cross to save mankind. He is the one to deliver us from death. This death is not physical death, it's a spiritual and eternal death. Number two, Jesus is the bread of life. The bread of life that addresses our problem of hunger. In John chapter 6, from verse 51 
over to this debate. Jesus is the bread that heals, the bread that strengthens. Ordinary bread may sustain, strengthen, but cannot heal. We know what bread is all about. The law we take tea with. Some people prefer taking it with, with beans, while some prefer taking it with tea. The food we eat every day is also bread because it sustains and also strengthens, but cannot heal or strengthen like the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. Whoever eats the bread of life shall have eternal life. The first part of John chapter 6 from verse 41 to 51 says, that the Jews murmured concerning Jesus because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. They protested because of what Jesus said. They believed that they knew him better and where he came from. Then again, they protested because he said, Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. They protested because their imaginations couldn't explore what Jesus was telling them. The message Jesus passed across, they didn't get it well. That's why they complained. They murmured. Some of them were, were saying, does it mean that we are into cannibalism? No, we are not cannibalistic animals. We are not eating human beings. So they were not happy. They were not happy because they didn't get the message. We remember how the Israelites complained and murmured against God in the Old Testament, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 24, and in the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 1. The Israelites were famous complainers, but they are hardly alone. We are all tempted to feel abandoned when life becomes difficult and to challenge the scriptures and the historical Christian beliefs when they run counter to popular culture and to complain when God fails to meet our expectations. Then Jesus answered them, Don't murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. This shows that salvation depends on God's initiative. God draws those who accept Jesus to him. The word draw almost always implies some kind of resistance according to Beckley. It is the word for drawing a heavy laden net to the shore. John chapter 21, verses 6 and 11. It is used of Paul and Silas being dragged before the magistrates in Philippi in Acts chapter 16, verse 19. God can draw men and women. But their resistance can defeat God's proof. Jesus is the bread of life. Don't refuse the invitation and command of Jesus. We have to believe in Jesus because it's our work to believe in God. To believe is to trust in God, and to trust in God is to have confidence in God. Believing in Jesus strengthens the faith of believers. Faith is a supernatural gift of God which enables us to believe without doubt in whatever God has revealed. Faith in God 